Hello and welcome to Maker Hanger. My name is Lucas Weekly, and today we're going to be talking about the parts we're going to be using in the Maker Trainer. I'll also show you how to solder all the connectors on and how to connect all the parts together. So let's get started. The first part is the prop. Like we talked about before, the prop is the most important part of the plane because all the other parts are based off of it. I chose a 6x4 prop. Now I chose this for a number of reasons, so let me explain. A small prop will have low torque roll. This will mean one less thing that you'll have to worry about when flying. Also, because the prop is small, it can be put in the back, pushed the plane along, which means if you get into a crash then the motor and prop are saved. However, you might be asking yourself if it's hard to take off because of the lack of static thrust, and yeah, it can be a bit tricky, but I'll help you get over that. For the motor, we're going to use an 1800 kV, 28 by 36 brushless motor, and this is going to supply plenty of power and allow you to expand by putting more things onto the plane and still having it fly. With the 6x4 prop, the plane will draw about 15 to 20 amps, so I chose a 30 amp ESC. This is going to supply plenty of power for the motor. It's also going to run very cool, so you won't have to worry too much about heating inside your plane. It also has a BEC, of course, and it'll be able to power four servos. The battery we're going to use is a 2200 milliamp hour 30C 3S LiPo pack, and this will supply plenty of power for long flights, and it also is heavy enough to properly balance out the plane. The receiver is, of course, an orange receiver, which goes with the orange T6 transmitter transmitter like we talked about before. We'll use 9 gram digital nylon geared servos. These have plenty of torque for their size and will be able to easily push and pull the control surfaces on this plane. For soldering, the ESC is the only component that needs connectors. This is because everyone has their own favorite connectors, so companies that make ESCs don't put on connectors so you can put them on yourself. The three wires going to the motor will get female 3.5 millimeter gold bullet connectors. And on the battery side we'll put a male XD60 plug, which is the type of connector that comes on the 2200 milliamp battery from Hobby King. Let's get soldering. Okay, so here are the parts you're first going to need to start soldering. You're going to need your heat shrink, some scissors to cut it, and then a lighter to shrink it. You can also use a heat gun, but lighters are the easiest. You're going to need some helping hands for holding parts, some solder, of course, and your soldering station. Now I'm using my HECO or HACO FX triple eight. This is by far my favorite soldering station and it, I think it's the best for the money at $80. But of course you can always get the $15 ones from Radio Shack and uh, just be sure to get a chiseled tip on it. This will have a lot of surface area for the parts that we're going to be soldering on today. Now you're also going to want safety glasses. Safety first and soldering is no different. For the parts you're going to need your ESC the three female bullet connectors, as well as the male XT60 plug. Now this is the one with the prongs on the inside. This is the male, the one that goes on the battery is the female. One tip that you can learn is that if something is giving power, it gets a female connector. And if something is taking power from something else, it gets a male connector. Okay, we're gonna be starting with the three wires going to the motor. These get the female bullet connectors. So. Here's what they look like. Now there's a deep end to them, and then there's a shallower end. The shallower end is the cup that we solder into. So we're gonna put this into our helping hands. It can be a little bit tricky. You wanna get it so it's secure. You can put it in the back part actually, and then it holds it pretty tight. You don't want it to get loose while you're soldering. This other end we won't be using right now. So we have our soldering iron on. We have our chisel tip here. We're gonna get some solder, tin the tip just a tiny bit, just a little drop, yep. And then we're gonna put this to the outside of the connector. So then we're gonna wait for it to heat up and then start filling it with the solder. Now you wanna fill it to about one third of the way up or halfway, which is good. So now that we have this somewhat full, we're gonna keep it on and we're gonna take one of our wires. We're going to put it inside of the cup. Make sure it's seated centered. And you're going to let go of the soldering iron and wait for it to dry. You can wipe off your soldering iron on your sponge in the meantime, put it back in the holder. Now you can give it a quick tug to make sure that it's soldered in place. <laughs> Everything is hot, so watch out. Ouch, ouch. And then there we have a soldered on bullet connector. Be careful when you first take this off from soldering it because it is still very hot. Now you don't want to get anything on the inside of these because that's where the connector is going. So let me finish doing the rest of these and then we'll put on the battery connector.
Okay, so now that we have all the connectors soldered on, let's go ahead and put some heat shrink on as well. Now you're gonna wanna cut a piece that covers both the entire connector and also a little bit of the wire. So this is about good. You're gonna cut all of them the same size. Or thereabouts. Then you're gonna slide them over the connector. The end of the heat shrink is flush with the end of the connector. So now once you have all these on, you can use a lighter and we'll go ahead and shrink the heat shrink. Kind of messed up with the lighter on these, but you can just wipe off the soot and everything's fine. So there is the side for the motor and that's all soldered up. So before we solder on the XT60 plug, let me show you how to check for the polarity. So you see this little negative sign right here? Well, that's your negative end. And then the plus sign over here is your positive end. Keep those in mind because remember, if you plug in the battery backwards, you can fry your electronics. So it's pretty clear on the connector which one is which though. So we're gonna start with the negative end. We're gonna put this inside of the helping hands and we're gonna use the other side to attach our wire. And there's a couple methods that you can use to solder these on. But first, I just forgot, you need to put your heat shrink on before you solder on the connector. This is because you can't get to it afterwards like the other ones. So just cut a piece that'll cover up the actual contact so you can see it'll cover up there and also a little bit of the wire for some strain relief. So slide it on, put on the alligator clip. Now the first method that I'm going to show you is to put in the wire into the contact and then put the soldering iron and solder onto that and then solder it that way. The other way is to fill the cup with solder first, heat it up and then slide the wire in. So we're gonna do this one first and on the other side we'll do the other technique. Just gonna put on the soldering iron. It does take a little while to catch. You can go ahead and flip it over some solder on the inside of the cup and there it starts to go and you don't want to stop adding solder until you see that until you see that it's covered the wire and also the inside of the contact so that's what you're looking for when you solder on one of these and then you can slide your heat shrink over and into the connector and then use your lighter if it would work to shrink it and that's a pretty good contact now we're going to fill the cup up with solder first and then we're going to put the wire in i personally like the previous method however this one does work too just choose whichever one works for you the best now this one is going to be a little bit tricky because I have to switch hands and we're actually just going to hold the wire. We're going to liquefy the solder. Ew, this is tricky. Push it in, make sure it's solid. And then now we have the soldered connector. So as you can see, that technique worked just as well. Now I prefer the other one, but choose whichever one you want to use. I'm going to slide this over and like before, use the lighter to shrink the heat shrink. And that's it. Your connector is now soldered and you fully soldered your ESC with both sides. To connect the motor, take the three wires coming off of the motor and connect them to the three wires going to the ESC. It does not matter which wires these plug into because it's all AC current. If you spin up the motor and it's turning the wrong way, take any two of the three wires coming off the ESC in the motor and switch them. This will change the direction. Now I know this sounds sketchy, but 
Remember that the three wires gumming off of the motor go to separate coils of wire inside the motor, like we talked about before. Just by swapping two wires, that'll change how power is being put into the coils, changing the direction of the motor. Now let's connect the servos. So the two servos that are connected to your ailerons can either go into a Y splitter and then put into the aileron port of your receiver, or you can plug them directly into the receiver in the aileron and auxiliary ports. Now this does require a little bit of extra programming on your transmitter, but we'll cover that when we program the radio in a later episode. The elevator servo plugs into the elevator port on the receiver, and then finally the ESC servo lead goes into the throttle port on the receiver. The last physical connection is the battery, and you'll only plug this in when you're ready to fly or when you want things to move. Now let me show you how to bind your transmitter with your receiver, it's really simple. To bind your electronics, first make sure your bind plug is plugged into the bind port of your receiver. Then make sure your radio is turned off and plug in your electronics. The receiver will start flashing and now it's in bind mode. Take your radio and hold down the trainer switch up at the top. Hold that down, power on the radio. It's gonna say bind. The light's gonna turn off on your receiver. Wait for it to start flashing again. Let go of the trainer switch and then everything's bound. Remove your bind plug unplug your electronics, plug them back in, and now it's bound. And that's it, everything's connected. You should be able to move around the right stick on your transmitter and see all the servos move. Be careful with your motor and don't put on your prop until you're ready to fly. This is not a toy and it can seriously cut you or even take off a finger. If you think about it, just knowing how to find these components and how to connect them all together allows you to build your own airplane, do whatever you want, and have fun. Next time, I'll show you how to print, lay out, and cut all the parts out for the Maker Trainer, as well as how to cover them with the colored packing tape. So, I'll see you then. Thanks for watching.